Hey everyone, my name's Jessie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about the best books of 2020 that I've read so far. So it is about midway through the year, a little over midway now, and I've seen the mid-year freak out book tag going around. Let me know if you want me to do that book tag, but one of the main questions of that tag is what are the best books that you've read? And I feel like I have enough books that I want to talk about for that one question that I just wanted to make a whole video dedicated to just my favorite books because I've read so many great books this year that I really want to talk about. You can see I have so many books missing on my shelves, so we have a lot of books to talk about today. I'm just going to go ahead, stop talking and get right into it. Starting with fantasy books. I feel like fantasy has been the genre that I've really been reading the most of this year, so I have a lot. Let's get the obvious out of the way first, and that is Lord of the Rings, which I started and completed this year and loved it, loved every second of it. I love these characters. I love the world. I can see why it's iconic. It's Lord of the Rings. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything more. I have a full review of it if you want to check it out, but it's just the best. If you love fantasy and haven't read it yet, Please do yourself a favor, pick it up. The next book I have to talk about, I gave it five stars and it is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. I loved this. This follows a world where the magic system revolves around colors and certain people are able to what they call draft colors, which basically means absorb colors around them to use as power. And so certain people can draft certain colors and those colors give you different abilities. And some people can draft multiple colors, but there is one person in this world who can draft every color and they are called the prism. The most powerful being in this world that balances all of the magic in this world. So one of the perspectives we follow is the prism in this book, but we also follow several other perspectives as this kind of war is brewing um, between certain groups of people. I don't want to say too much because really I think you should go into this book just knowing that you're going to get an amazing magic system, really fun characters, some of them more likable than others. I've definitely seen a lot of people not love the characters in this book, but they just personally really worked for me. I thought the twists and turns throughout this whole book really kept me engaged. The writing style is really easy to get into, so I wouldn't be intimidated by that. I would say though, like the first hundred pages of this book, you may find yourself confused because it's really just setting up the world and the magic system. But once you get past like that hundred page mark, it just kind of starts to click in your head and it becomes a lot easier to read. So if you're looking for just an epic, high fantasy, fun magic system, great characters. I cannot recommend this enough. I can't wait to read the next book. The next book I have was another five-star book, and that is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This is the second book in the Winter Night trilogy, and so this trilogy follows a very Russian-inspired fantasy world that reads very much like a fairy tale. Uh, the writing is stunning, it's very atmospheric, and we follow our main character Vasya, who is able to see and communicate with demons in this world, and a lot of people believe that this ability kind of marks her as a witch, so she's very much prejudiced against in this world, and it's just about her kind of coming into her own power and her own self, and finding her place in this world and trying to escape all of this persecution. And it's just incredible. I loved the second book, especially the first book in this trilogy. I gave four stars. I thought the writing was stunning, but it was very slow paced. It didn't have much of a plot. It was very much character driven and beautiful, but I like my books a little bit quicker paced. And I have to say that the second book in this trilogy really just blew me away. The stakes are raised. The action is increased. The pace is increased. And Vasya as a character is one of my favorite favorite characters of all time now. I love her. She's so much fun to follow and get to experience her growth. It's just such a great series. And the third book is wonderful as well. So I cannot recommend this book enough, especially in the winter time. If you're looking for a good wintry fantasy story that's very fairy tale like, this is a wonderful, wonderful series to check out. Another book I have to gush about, and I've already gushed about it so many times before, and it's Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. 
wow, I am so unbelievably impressed with this book. I have a full review of it, but if you don't know what Foundry Side is about, it basically is about this world where the magic system is all to do with kind of changing objects' realities. So some people have this ability to what they call scribe, and this ability allows them to kind of jump into an inanimate object's reality and change it. So they can make these inanimate objects act differently than they normally would. It, it's very confusing, but I promise if you read this, it's explained in such a brilliant way and it's so much fun, so unique. The action scenes because of this magic system are, in my opinion, some of the best I've ever read about and the characters, oh my goodness. We follow a character who really reminded me of Vin from Mistborn. She is definitely a like kind of street urchin thief character who is trying to pull off this heist that goes wrong and that kind of pulls pulls her into this greater conspiracy that's happening in this fantasy world and she has to team up with this like ragtag group of like semi-criminals to help save the world. It's so much fun. Oh my gosh, I can't recommend it enough, especially if you love the trope of inanimate objects taking on personalities. I loved in Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson how one of our characters is a sword. That is so present in this book. I loved that trope and just getting to see all of the different thoughts of like inanimate objects around these characters it was so much fun. I can't recommend this enough. So much humor. I can't wait to read Shorefall now. And the last fantasy book that I have to mention is uh, more of like an honorable mention because I did give this one 4.5 stars instead of a full five, but that is Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. So I read Red Sister and I liked it. I saw a lot of potential in it, but it wasn't my favorite. But reading Grey Sister, it blew me away. The first half of this book, I would say, reads pretty slow. It takes a while to get into, but the second half of this book is incredible. I can't say enough good things about these characters and how unique and, and lush this world is. Red Sister in the, this Book of the Ancestor trilogy, if you don't know, follows a girl named Nona who is saved from a hanging for committing a crime and she is placed in this convent of nuns and trains to become an assassin with a lot of other children who are either orphaned or no longer wanted or are just training in the art of combat or enlightenment. It's just fascinating. The whole Red Sister book takes place in like this school setting where Grey Sister does have that school setting, but it kind of starts exploring other parts of the world as well. And that's what I loved. And so this really just solidified my love for this series. I can't wait to read Holy Sister because wow, I'm so impressed with the action and the writing and the characters, just everything about Grey Sister worked for me. And if it hadn't been for that pretty slow start, this would be five stars easily. So I can definitely see myself loving Holy Sister, especially with how this ended. All right, time to talk about some sci-fi books. So I have been reading quite a lot more sci-fi. It's definitely a genre that I've been wanting to get a lot more into this year. So the two kind of standouts, definitely, definitely, I have to mention Sleeping Giants and the second book in this series, Waking Gods. This is the Themis Files trilogy by Sylvain Nouvelle. This follows the story of a girl who as a child falls into this huge robotic hand and that kind of sparks her interest for in the future becoming a scientist and figuring out where in the world the rest of the pieces of this big robot are buried on earth. This whole series is told in like a very interview kind of format, like you're almost reading from like transcripts or case files. It's It reminds me of Illuminae in that way because it's not in the traditional format that it's told in, but I loved that. And especially listening to the audiobooks, th these audiobooks are some of my favorites that I've ever listened to. I think it just really enhanced the experience because Every character is played by a different narrator and they really help bring the story to life. I love how political this got. I love the different themes these books explored. I will say the third book was definitely more of a disappointment for me, unfortunately, but Sleeping Giants and Waking Gods were five stars easy for me. I loved them so much. So I definitely recommend this if you are trying to get more into the sci-fi genre. It's not too hard of a sci-fi that, you know, it gets confusing in any way or is too bogged down by science. It really does concentrate more on the politics behind this. And 
that's what I loved about it. So very much recommend the Themis File series the first two at least. <laughs> Next book that I read was A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. This I gave four stars, but the more I think about it, the more I think I should maybe revisit that rating and because it really has stuck with me. A Memory Called Empire follows this woman who is an ambassador between this space station and this like galactic empire. Her predecessor, he mysteriously died and no one knows really what happened to him. The main character, our new ambassador, believes that he was killed, so she's trying to figure out what happened to her predecessor on this planet, um, but is also trying to perform all of her ambassador Dorial ambass ambassador. He's trying to perform her ambassador duties as well, and it explores this really cool concept that I personally haven't read about, where some of the science is injecting another consciousness into your own body. So being able to hear someone else's thoughts and almost like their soul is inside you. And it's really fascinating stuff. I loved the science in this and the themes that it explored with that science and then how political this got. So if you are a fan of like political intrigue in your fantasies or your sci-fis, oh my goodness, this was so much fun. And I loved the characters. I think that this did everything that it, that it set out to do extremely well. And this, this is our Katie Martin's debut novel, and I am blown away by her writing. It was gorgeous. The world building was so intricate. I think that's, looking back on it, that's why I gave it the four star, was because it was so dense with so much world building that at times it came off as confusing. Like the first 50 pages, I was like, I am so intimidated by this <laughs> because it is so heavy on the world building. But my goodness, if you stick with it, everything starts to make sense, and it's just stunning how much world building is packed into this novel. It's so cool. So I really recommend this. I almost think I should give it a little bit higher of a rating, maybe 4.5 stars, because it really stuck with me and I really can't wait for the next book in this series. All right, now let's talk about some thrillers. So I am super behind and finally read Gone Girl this year and I get it. <laughs> I get the hype. I loved it so much. This might be my favorite thriller ever. Um, I had watched the movie years ago and I hardly remembered anything about it. If you haven't read Gone Girl and you're a fan of thrillers, please read Gone Girl, please. The next one, again, I'm so behind on my thrillers. Uh, I finally read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Loved it. Gave it five stars easy, like so much fun, totally surprised me. It was entertaining from start to finish. Yes, I get it. Okay. So those are the more obvious ones. I also have um, Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. I gave this book five stars. This was the definition of a perfect thriller for me because it kept me turning the pages Nonstop. I could not put this book down because I just had to know what was going to happen to these characters. It was so thrilling, so messed up. Oh my gosh. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I loved the ending so much. Um, I can't recommend this enough and I don't think this is going to be for everybody. Like this is not like objectively the best book ever, but my goodness, did it work for me? It was just, I couldn't put it down. That is for me what a thriller is supposed to do. It's supposed to have a great ending, surprises, but it's also supposed to just be so bingeable that you just can't put it down because you're on the edge of your seat the whole time. And that was this book for me, edge of my seat the whole time. It was so good. And I'm not even going to say anything about the summary because the, I feel like even the little synopsis right here gives too much away. Go into this book blind, just do it. Holy cow. And then the next two books I have are not perfect five stars, but they are 4.5 stars and they are very, very good. I just have to recommend them. The first being The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. So much fun. Cover, the title, everything about this. You just know it's gonna be a fun time. So unique. Uh, it follows these suburban housewives in the 90s who believe that a vampire has moved into their neighborhood. No one believes them, so they take it upon themselves to go and kill this vampire, and it's great. <laughs> Not pretty vampires, it is like gory horror vampires, and that's the vampire that I love. So 
I really enjoyed this. I think it could have used more of the vampires and more of the scares, and that's why I gave it the 4.5 stars instead of the perfect five stars. But my goodness, was this so much fun. And it also explores some really important themes of just what it was like being a housewife in the 90s. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed this. Don't go in expecting nonstop scares and thrills because I don't think that's what this is, but it's just so unique. Southern charm. It takes place in Charleston, South Carolina. It's just great. <laughs> I loved it. And then the last thriller book I have to mention, Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Oh my god. Okay, so this one follows the story of a woman in present day who years ago her aunt had worked at this motel kind of in the middle of nowhere and had disappeared from this motel one day. And so the girl in present day is going to try to go back to that motel and find out what happened to her aunt. But then you're also following the timeline in the past and you're following the aunt's story. So you're following both of these timelines kind of at the same time and they're running in parallels. So you can kind of see the buildup and the tension is building right alongside each other. And it's so much fun, that build up and just the atmosphere in this book it's very like turn of the key in my opinion where it's like more of a spooky ghostly thriller rather than like a domestic thriller i loved this i love ghost stories though anything with ghosts is going to immediately attract me because i just love a good ghost story so this totally worked for me some of the scenes in this book had like my hairs standing up it was so creepy i loved it i wanted even more of that which is again why i didn't give it the perfect five stars if you don't notice i really like my thrillers really scary <laughs> and like a lot of horror but that's not what everyone's gonna like so for me it wasn't like perfect but it was so darn close and i just I loved how spooky and ghostly this got. So if this sounds interesting to you, I definitely recommend it. This is such a long video, but we're almost there. Okay, just a couple more books. And now these are all of the like contemporary slash like romance books that I've read that really stuck out to me. The first being Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. I read Beartown last year and it was one of my favorites of the whole year. So Us Against You is the direct sequel to Beartown. So you're following all of the same characters in the same towns. And pff, again, Frederick Bachman with these characters, he brings them to life so vividly. It's unbelievable. So if you haven't read Beartown, please, please read Beartown. It's stunning and it explores some really hard hitting themes and subjects, but it's so good. It, it, it made me angrier than any other book has ever made me because it felt so real. It felt like it was a real account of these characters' lives. And it just astounds me how Frederick Bachman can make you feel so much for these characters. So I can't recommend this duology enough. I even think that there's another book coming out in this like same world in next year. I saw it on Goodreads. So if he has another book coming out with these characters, I'm gonna die because I love, love these characters and this town and just everything about it. It's so good. So yes, us against you. The next book I have is just a cute, fun, contemporary read, and that was Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. I thought that this was so much fun. It was so cute. Uh, romance for me isn't gonna ever be like my favorite books of all time, but man, in terms of the romance books I've read, this is one of the stronger ones for sure. I gave this five stars because if a romance can just make me smile from start to finish and there's no miscommunication in them, I'm gonna love it. And this was so cute and it made me laugh. It was just adorable. It's about this girl named Evie Drake who is a recent widow and kind of starts her life over in this new town and meets this man who moves in next door. It's one of those classic romance books, but it's just so cute. The writing is so great. I loved it. I loved the little wit and the humor and the banter between these characters. And I loved how the main character didn't need the man. Like that wasn't the solution. It was finding happiness within herself. Like I just love everything about this one. I think it did what it set out to do very well. So if you're just looking for like a cute, little beachy read that's just gonna make you smile. Evie Drake Starts Over is definitely a good one. And then the last book. 
<laughs> this is a long video. The last book I have is Daisy Jones and the Six, Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was everywhere last year, everywhere everyone and their mother was talking about Daisy Jones and the Six and I was like really like is it that good it's that good it's that good granted I love classic rock I love classic rock I love 60s 70s 80s rock so for me this was so much fun because it follows this fictional 70s rock band and it follows it almost in a documentary style format so if you're listening to the audiobook it sounds like you're listening to a podcast about an interview with a real rock band like this rock band feels so unbelievably real and like they could exist in our real world it's just unreal how Taylor Jenkins Reid writes such realistic flawed characters that you can still get behind and root for. Daisy Jones has a ton of flaws. Oh my god and they're on full display in this book but she is so real and so cool. I just loved Daisy Jones. I loved all the characters. The, the format worked for me. I listened to the audiobook which I think is definitely the route to go if you can get your hands on it for this book because every character is played by a different narrator kind of like Sleeping Giants and it just enhances the reading experience so much hearing them come to life with these different people narrating. If you have even an interest in that time period and what it would be like being a rock band it's so good you guys it's so good like I want to listen to these songs and I can't wait for the TV show. I can't wait. I'm so excited. So yes, I get it. I get the hype for Daisy Jones and the Six. I can see why it was on everybody's best book of the year for 2019. I get it. So good. Please read it if you have any interest in it. If you have zero interest in it, don't bother. But if you have any interest in it, you might love it. So those are all of the best books I've read so far this year. There's a lot of them and there's so many more I could mention that are so, so good that, you know, maybe weren't perfect, weren't all-time favorites, but are so good. So I'm so excited to see what the rest of the year has in store for me in terms of reading and finding new great books. So did you see any that you absolutely loved that I mentioned? Let's chat about them in the comments down below. And then what was your favorite book that you have read so far this year? definitely let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.